Okay, so this video is going to be a brief kind of quick introduction and a bit of a crash course on leak groups. So I'm going to try and stay kind of away too much from the definitions and just kind of rely on examples and intuition. So I've mentioned previously or in some other videos, a Lie group is essentially the continuous generalization of a group, which previously we saw was just a set called G of potentially an infinite number of discrete elements. And now this um, discrete set can be continuously parameterized by uh, continuous parameters, we'll see shortly. But what makes the group a group is the composition operation, which we see we have to define between all the elements of the group, and it has to satisfy closure, and there has to be an identity, and you have to be able to invert the transformation. Okay, so that was a standard group, and now a Lie group is essentially a set that is a group and also a manifold. So not only do we have a composition operation, we also have some kind of smooth atlas defined on the group. Don't worry too much about what this means exactly. It essentially just means that we can talk about the group in a smooth set of coordinates, essentially. So that's the kind of vague definition. A group is just, a lead group, sorry, is just a group that is also a manifold. And we're going to see that this kind of structure allows us to talk about lots of geometric properties of these Lie groups and they're going to be heavily related to symmetry as we're going to see shortly. Okay so I'm just going to dive in and give you an example straight away. It's probably the most important or really you can kind of view it as being the mother of all Lie groups which is the general linear group GL and now N, I'll tell you what this means in a second, so this is the real general linear group Essentially, as a group, this consists of the set of all n by n, so n-dimensional square matrices. So the general linear group is essentially the set of all possible n by n square matrices that are also invertible. So essentially that just means that they have zero determinant. And now I'll call the group element G. And to be invertible, oops, sorry, it has to have non-zero determinant. This is kind of a vague statement about the general linear group. It's essentially the group of all n by n matrices, and now you can convince yourself that, well, we can compose matrices and they're also going to remain an n by n matrix, so our composition is closed. And then, of course, uh, the matrix multiplication we require to be invertible through this condition, so invertibility of the composition is satisfied. And then, of course, we have the identity matrix. So, this is a group. I haven't shown it rigorously, just kind of proved it by waving my hands. But essentially, this is going to be a group, and it's going to be uh, represented by these n by n matrices. So, how on earth is this a manifold? Well, first of all, let's just remember what we mean by manifold. Essentially, it's just a topological space or a set. That would be the group part. And then we need to define on that set some kind of chart, which is essentially a map from the t abstract topological space set into some copy of the real numbers. So how do we do this with Lie groups, and in particular these matrix groups as they're known? So if I just take a simple example of a 2x2 two two matrix, it's going to have four components, which we call the matrix elements. So this is a 2x2 two two matrix, it's going to have four independent matrix elements. And now what we do is we essentially just say, okay, each of these matrix elements represents one of our real coordinates. So if you like, you can think of each of these matrix elements as being their own individual map into some copy of the real numbers, and so on. So if we have an n by n matrix, that's going to map into, so, the real numbers to the n squared power so we can see we, here we have four matrix elements, effectively that's four coordinates, and 
yeah, these coordinates are just a map from the kind of abstract element, which is the group element, the matrix, into some concrete real number space. So you should view the matrix elements now of a GL matrix. They're essentially just the coordinates of the manifold, which is kind of being described by this Lie group. And then, of course, the more matrix elements you have, you're going to increase the number of coordinates you need by n squared. So in the case of the general linear group, we would say that we have n squared parameters, which is the terminology used in the kind of group case, essentially just the same thing as coordinates in this case. But now for the case of more kind of complicated Lie groups, where we've defined more kind of intricate structure, we're not going to have n squared parameters. It's going to be reduced by some particular amount, depending on what extra structure we've imposed. So you might say, for example, impose that we want to have the determinant equal to 1, for example, then that would impose a condition on the matrix elements. We'll just quickly do that. If we say that debt G has to be equal to 1, what's the determinant? Well, it's AD minus BC. If that has to be equal to 1, this is effectively constraining our coordinates in some way. And we might, for example, be able to then reduce the number of free coordinates down in number. So we'll see this in a second, and now this is kind of getting to the point of why the general linear group is so useful is because essentially it is, if you like, the largest Lie group that we can construct because it's, well, it is a very general Lie group. It's just any possible invertible matrix that you can write down. And now all other Lie groups are going to be able to be realized as subgroups or subsets of an appropriately large general linear group. And we're going to see that they don't have n squared free parameters, but it's going to be related to the kind of extra structure which we've defined on the group. Okay, so that was the general linear group. I'll just quickly go over and summarize again. Essentially, the general linear group as a set contains all possible n by n matrices that are invertible. And now we realize this as being a manifold by essentially letting each of the matrix elements of the group elements, they each are described by a real space, so they're effectively given coordinates, and each of the matrix elements in the general linear group is an independent coordinate, it can take any value, it's not constrained by the other matrix elements. But now as we move forward we're going to see how adding extra structure, like for example imposing a unit determinant, is going to fix some of the coordinates in relation to the others, and we're going to reduce the number of free parameters to some number that's less than n squared.